So you're looking to get the most powerful pals in the entire game with the most broken passive skills that you can possibly get. Well, this is accomplished through, you guessed it, breeding. And this is gonna be your guide to get it done. In this video, we're gonna talk about absolutely everything that you need to know to create the strongest pals and also the best pals for farming resources more efficiently. We're gonna be talking about the general breeding system, uh, the materials that you'll need, how to learn the language of breeding. Well, what, what do I mean by that? There's a website that explains every single combination of pals that you can put together that shows you if you put this and this in the breeding pin, they will make this. And all you gotta do is put a cake in the box, get two pals of the opposite gender in here and they're gonna be cranking out kids like a nobody's business, just like this other pen over here. First things first, I wanna show you this website that I stumbled upon by this guy named Kimpton. And this is just incredible. I hope this guy never has to buy another coffee in his entire life. Because what he's done is he's created a system that reveals the math behind Pal World and how pals are created. So basically what you can do is you can select a desired child or a pal that you want. And let's say in this scenario, I want a shadow bee because that's what I'm going to be using as an example. You select shadow beak as the desired child. And let's say for the parent, we select Necromus. This will then show you every combination of pals that you need to put in the pen to eventually get yourself to a shadow beak. So in this example, you can take Necromus with either um, Relaxorus, Ice Reptiro, Beacon, Pyron Noct, and the list goes on and on. But eventually you're gonna use those parents to get to the pal that you want at the bottom of the chain. So more to come on this later, but I wanted to empower you to learn how to search for pals and to look for certain parents because you're gonna need that knowledge moving forward once you start breeding so that you don't waste your time. My goal is to make everything extremely easy for you to understand so that you can learn again the language of breeding and fly off into the sunset making the strongest pals that you can possibly make. So first things first, let's look at the basics. Every pal that you catch, whether it's from the wild or breeding, they're all gonna have random stats and, and random what are called passive skills. If you look down here in the bottom right hand corner or over here, this this uh, Mazarina has downtrodden, which gives you a negative 10% defense. These are all seemingly random for each pal, but those abilities, those passive skills, actually pass down to their children with a high degree of frequency if you breed them together. And so the idea is you want to take parents that have really strong passive skills and abilities, and you wanna pass them down to their children to eventually get to the pal that you wanna create. Another thing to keep in mind is that each pal has, yes, their own passive skills, but they also have their own unique predetermined hidden stats that are assigned to them when you either catch them or hatch them. So for example, I've got two beacons here. Well, they're both level 50. They both have no passive skills, but look at their attack and defense. One is 625, the other is 566, and the defense is 370 and the others is 436. Well, why is that? They're both the same level. They have no passive skills, but for some reason their stats are higher and that's because of the predetermined RNG. So this is something you need to kind of put in your back pocket as we move forward to the rest of the video because the parents that you assign in the breeding pen are gonna pass down their higher stats or their lower stats to their kids. So in a perfect world, you wanna get parents with really high base stats and use those for breeding. The next thing you need to know is when you breed two pals together, their child, whatever they create, is more likely to have the passive skills that their parents have. So there is a degree of randomness to this, but if I hatched a hundred pals between this Grizzbold and Sasaku Aqua, the majority of them are gonna have some combination of muscle head, lucky, ferocious, nimble, and bottomless stomach. So the idea is you wanna get parents that have really good passive skills, and breed those together until the children have the passive skills that are desirable. So in this case, it would be muscle head, lucky, and ferocious. Now, this sounds a little bit daunting. It sounds like it's gonna take forever. And honestly, your first pal pretty much does. But once you get that one perfect pal, like look, for example, at this shadow beak that I landed on. He's got Lord of the Underworld, ferocious, legend and muscle head. That is a 90% increase in attack damage. This thing is an absolute animal, just an absolute animal. I'm gonna do another video on getting the perfect shadow beak and the reasons why I think this is gonna be the best pal in the game. 
from a PvP perspective in another video. But for now, if this is something that you're after, definitely stick around the rest of this video to make sure you understand how I got there. But once you get one of these and you start using this as a breeding parent, the majority of its children are going to have like stats. And look at this. Every single one of these shadow beaks has that same thing. Legend, Musclehead, Ferocious, and Lord of the Underworld. So once you get to this point, you can use this parent to breed with another pal to pass on these skills to things like a Blazamut. This is a perfect Blazamut. This is a perfect Orserk. This is a perfect Anubis. All with very similar uh, stats and abilities and passive skills that I pass down to them from investing my time into this one shadow beak. So it takes a long time to get your first one, but it is definitely worth it to, to keep at it because once you get one, they just start snowballing. I mean, I got this one, one shadow beak done, and it took me about a day and a half. And then after I had that, I got this Blasma, this Orzerk, and this Anubis the next day, literally the next day. So it's definitely worth it to get your first one and use that as a stem parent to then continue to pass those passive skills to your other pals. Before we continue with the breeding, let's talk a little bit about the fundamentals. You're gonna need to cook some cake and for that, you need yourself a Jormantide Ignis. If you guys don't know, you can get him on this island over here. So for reference, here's the Plateau of Beginnings. But Jormantide Ignis spawns here. If he doesn't show up initially, just fly off the island. Wait until your screen turns blue. And then you can turn back around and all the spawns will reset. And you just go essentially until you get what you want and then catch it. So I know that these are really high level. I know that this is gonna be difficult for some people, but guys, honestly, you shouldn't be worrying about min-maxing your breeding until you at least hit the max level. And by that time, you will more than be able to take out these uh, Jormantite Ignises and catch them in the wild yourself. Now, if leveling's not your fancy and you just wanna get to breeding, there is one other thing you can do, but it's probably gonna take a little bit of time. What you could do is get yourself some heat resistant armor, a flying mount, Nightwing is going to be the earliest flying mount you can get, and then you want to come to this volcano biome. Now what you're going to be looking for is you're going to fly along the mountainside looking for a huge dragon egg, that's the black and purple egg, and that one has a chance of dropping, or hatching rather, Jormantide Ignis, but it's, again, it's probably going to take some time, I wouldn't recommend it, I would just level up and catch him in that little, um, preserve habitat on the island that I showed you before. Once you have yourself a Jormantite Ignis for cooking, you're going to need to get yourself a Mazarina for some milk, a Chicopee for hatching eggs, and then you're going to need a Bee Guard for some honey. Those are the ingredients that you're going to need to bake some cakes. Chickabee can be found in any of these uh, highlighted habitats here. You, If you've played this game for five minutes, you've probably seen 20 of these. So make sure you catch one or two of these, put them in the ranch, and you're good to go. Mazarina can be found in this habitat here. Go and catch yourself a few of those, and you can put them in the ranch as well. And finally, Bee Guard, not to be confused with Eliza Bee, can be found in this habitat here. However, they can be a bit of a challenge to catch, especially early game, because by default, they just want to run at you and explode. So if that is a bit of a pain point for you, here's something else you can do. You can actually breed a Tombat with a Fucrates, and that will give you a Bee Guard, making it super easy for you. Both of these are found also very early game, right when you first start. You should see these at nighttime. So just catch two of them, breed them, and you got yourself a Bee Guard. The other ingredient you're going to need is a little bit of a wheat farm. So I actually have two of them in my breeding base, and I have um, all the pals needed to both water and harvest and move them into this food bowl here so that I have a constant stream of all the materials needed to actually make the cakes. Once you have all of those pals, make a ranch, put them in there, and they will go to town getting you all of the materials you need to bake the cakes. Then all you have to do is go over to your stove of choice, insert the materials, and then put your pal of choice to start cooking the cakes. The reason I'm using this Blasmud instead of uh, a Jormantide Ignis is because I actually leveled this all the way up and condensed it to max level. And if you don't know, what that does is it actually increases their work suit abilities. So he's now level five mining instead of four, and instead of level three kindling, it's level four kindling. So it's the same as uh, Jormantide Ignis. That's why I'm using him here. But in your application, just throw your Ignis there and watch the cakes funnel in. Now that you have all the materials, I want to give you some pro tips to really make your time easier. 
Tip number one is that pals with no passive skills are actually gold to keep. So these beacons are super worth holding on to. You might think they're useless, but essentially when it comes to breeding, these are considered blank canvases. And so they have no bad abilities to mix with good abilities into their children. So I would rather have one pal with no passive skills and another pal with amazing passive skills so that I have a higher likelihood of passing on all of the amazing passive skills and none of bad passive skills that would come from the other parent. Any of them that you get that have no passive skills, keep them no matter what they are. You could use them as a stem for a future breeding pattern. Pro tip number two, every pal that you see that has only golden skills, go ahead and hold on to those because you could use them as a stem or future breeding patterns. And I would much rather have, like this Anubis here has Legend and Ferocious, which are two amazing abilities to pass down to another pal. I would rather have this one over this Anubis that has Lucky, Ferocious, Legend, and Destructive, because this Destructive is going to essentially poison the well for every child that descends from this Anubis. I would rather have one Anubis with two golden skills and another Anubis with two other golden skills to pass down those desirable traits instead of having interference with destructive. If you look here, one of the parents had destructive and look what happened. This has destructive, this has destructive, that has destructive, that has destructive, and it just poisons the well for the rest of them that would descend from that one pal. So any pal you see that just has two clean golden skills or one or three or all four, go ahead and hold on to them. Tip number three is gonna vary from person to person. It just depends on what type of game you wanna play. But I actually, to increase efficiency, I changed my egg incubation settings to instant. So as soon as I put this huge dragon egg in there, it's ready to, it's already cooked and it's ready to hatch. Just depends on what type of game you want to play. But if you want to just breed as quickly as possible, I would recommend changing that setting and you'll be well on your way to getting perfect pals a lot quicker. Tip number four is, and this is kind of creepy, but you can actually put a monitoring stand in your base to make it to where all of your pals in your base are super hardworking, demands brutal work from your pals. For some reason, the pals that are in the pen don't have a decrease in sanity. All this does to them is it makes them lay eggs faster, which is good for you as a breeder. However, for the rest of your team in the base, their sanity depletes almost instantly and they just get really sad really quick. So maybe you don't do this. Now that we have everything in place, let's actually go through an example and I'll show you how I arrived at my perfect overpowered shadow beak from beginning to end. The first thing you guys want to do is pass down the legend passive skill. If you don't know already, only the legendary pals in the game come by default with this skill legend and their corresponding ability that increases their uh, damage type. So this Necromus has legend, which is a 20% increase in attack. 20% increase in defense, 15% movement speed. That is super overpowered. And then this one has Lord of the Underworld, which is a 20% increase to dark attack damage. If you look at some of the other legendary pals as well, this one, Palladius, his, he's got legend and the corresponding is Celestial Emperor. So that's the 20% to neutral attack damage. I actually made a huge mistake when I first did this and I, I thought Lucky was the only option I had. I didn't know that you could pass down Lord of the Underworld. And so I spent so much time getting a perfect Shadow Beak that has Lucky instead of Lord of Darkness. So it only is, or Lord of the Underworld, it's only a 15% attack increase rather than the 20% uh, increase to dark attack damage. So big, big mistake on my end, but I'm going to save you guys that mistake and teach you exactly what I did here. So looking back at our trusty website, we know that the desired child has to be Shadowbeak and a parent has to be Necromus because we need Legend and Lord of the Underworld. So if you do this, it shows you every single combination that you can put together to create for yourself your own Shadowbeak. In this example, I have Necromus and I also happen to have a beacon. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do Necromus bred with a beacon to create an Astagon with Legend and Lord of the Underworld, and then I'm gonna use that Astagon to breed with a Kitsune to then create a Shadow Beak. Back in the game here, I have a Necromus, and again, this is where you really need to pay attention if you're trying to min-max here. These two Necromus are both level 50, and they have different attack and defense stats. These two Beacons are both level 50 that have no passive skills, but they have different attacks and different defenses. So you need to decide for yourself, what, what's the most important thing? Do I want to have a higher base defense? 
I would go with these two, 729 over 722 and seven or in 436 over 370. I would go with these two. Or do you want one that is more attack weighted? Then I would go with these two, 625 over 566 attack and 938 over 916 attack. So what I ended up doing was I bred these two parents together to create an Astagon, and all I was looking for was Lord of the Underworld and Legend. But I actually got super lucky, and I got one of the other attacks, Ferocious. If I didn't get that, I would have just bred it up through the Kitsune line, but as soon as I got a Astagon with Lord of the Underworld and Legend, my job was done from the top down. Next up, what I had to do is I had to get a Kitsune that had Musclehead as well as Ferocious. Now, I can't find the example that I had. I think I deleted it, but you just do the same thing. You go to the calculator, you choose the desired child to be Kitsune, and you look for all the pals that you can possibly put together to then create a Kitsune and pass down the ability Musclehead. So you would just look through your, you would just look through your box until you found anything that had Musclehead, and as soon as you find it, you go to the website, you look at what you can breed that with to have, like this Bristilla, you look at what you can breed Bristilla with to eventually make a Kitsune, and then you're going to have a Kitsune that has Musclehead. It takes a little bit of time, but again, once you get it where you need it to be, the rest of your breeding is just going to fly by. So what I did was I bred this Astagon with Lord of the Underworld, Ferocious, and Legend until I eventually got Shadow Beaks with kind of fragmented stats. And, and this is where you really want to pay attention. You're going to get to a point where you're getting shadow beaks that aren't perfect, but they're better than the parents. So this Astagon has cold blooded. I don't want cold blooded. This Kitsune has capacitor and work slave. I don't want those two abilities. And so eventually what you'll do is you'll find that the children with clean golden stats will produce better children than the original adults. So the idea here is that you're going to be constantly looking to replace the parents to increase your chances of getting your perfect children. For example, one of my hatches, I got super lucky. This Shadow Beak has Lord of the Underworld, Musclehead, and Legend. And so the only thing I'm looking for is Ferocious. Now, this female has many of the same except Work Slave and also Ferocious. So I would breed these two together until I get lucky and the legend and musclehead and lord of underworld merges with ferocious and then i get a perfect parent so now you have your perfect shadow beak what do you do at that point do you stop i would suggest not to and the reason for that is this little thing here called the pal condensation machine what you're going to do is you're eventually going to get perfect shadow beaks and you need to infuse the same types of pals into that pal to increase its stats to level four now, this is going to sound crazy, but you I believe you need 116 of the same PAL to infuse it to level 4 to get its stats completely maxed out. So, for example, I've got this one here, maxed out level 4. It took about 116 Shadow Beaks to get to that point, which was a pretty much a nightmare. But if you keep going and you get two parents that have both perfect stats breeding with each other in the same pen, you're going to produce a ton of other... Um, shadow beaks or children that you're trying to make and they're all going to have perfect stats as well and at the end of it you can just count 116 but remember the parents initially have random stats assigned to them so what you should do is get everything to level 50 just put them on and it, it, if you haven't seen my previous video on how to farm legendary schematics Definitely go check that out because you can get these pals to level 50 instantly just by going to a boss and killing a couple. I show you how to do it super fast, so go ahead and watch that video. But you're just going to fill up your party with all your level 1 Shadow Beaks. Go kill a boss. They'll all be level 50. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come in here and just look at their stats. Okay, they're all different. And you just want to pick out the one that has the highest stats that you want. And that's the one that you're going to infuse all of the other ones into. And then if you have extra, you can give them to your friends. That's what I did. I, I had my brother on the server and I gave him a perfect everything. I gave him a perfect Shadow Beak, Blazimut, Orzerk, Anubis. And then he can use those to speed up his breeding process on my server. So the point is, once you get it, don't stop there. Keep going so that you can have pals to either give to your friends or use for the pal condensation machine. So there you have it, the definitive guide on breeding the most powerful pals within Pal World that you could possibly get your hands on. I hope you guys did enjoy. If I was unclear or if you have questions about anything, please leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer everything that you guys have for me. Also, I'm curious to know, how long did it take you guys to get your first perfect pal? 
Did you make the same mistake I did or did you have success the first time? If you guys are as excited for the future of this game as I am, please subscribe to the channel and let's go on the journey together. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you out in the next video.